Howdy y'all, Fast Force 289, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna be upgrading the cam in my car, going from a stock cam to a, a higher profile cam. And then also we're gonna be upgrading the intake as well, putting an aluminum metal brock intake on there as well. So let's go ahead and jump into it and get started on this. So the first thing you wanna do is we're gonna drain our radiator. We're gonna open this cockpit here, let the fluid run out. And also it's a good idea to take your radiator cap off, let air in so it'll force the fluid out faster. We get that drained down and we can start disassembling the motor. All right, we got the carburetor removed, radiator hoses, heater hoses. Now we can pop the spark plug wires off and remove the distributor. Just held in by one bolt right there, half inch, come straight out. All right, here we go. We got the fuel pump removed, valve covers, all that that you see. Now we can remove the alternator pulleys and harmonic balancer water pump time of cover. And then we can move on to the intake, rock our arms, and then pull the cam out. All right, we're going to remove the harmonic balancer. This is a 302, which generally has four. In this case, I'm going to put a 289 harmonic balancer, which only has three. Remove three bolts, nine sixteenths, and then we can remove the 13 sixteenths bolt to get the harmonic balancer off. All right, now we're down to this. We got the harmonic balancer pulled off. Water pump, now we can pull the timer cover. This is very important. All these bolts are easy to see on the timer cover. But there's four down here. You got one's gonna be a nine sixteenths and then a half inch on each corner of the oil pan here. So make sure you look out for that because if you don't take them out, you'll bust a timer cover trying to pry it off. So. All right, so as you can see, it's my buddy here helping me is taking the rocker arms out. These are our nine sixteenths on these. These are non-adjustable rockers. They just bolt torque to spec. Some of the 302s, 289s did come with adjustable rockers, but these are not. All right, so we got the timing chain removed. If you move this bottom sprocket out, the crank gear out just a little bit, and you can pull the top one off and then pull it out. You don't have to remove this if you're not replacing it. Just leave it there. Now we need to remove these two bolts here to 7 sixteenths, and pull the cam out. All right, here's your bolt as a handle for the cam, give you a better grip on it. Once you pull the plate off, we can just start pulling it out slowly. Okay, it barely made it, but it did it. So, we got the cam removed. Now we can go through and clean all of our gasket surfaces for the intake and the timing cover and oil pan. And we're we'll just gonna take a razor blade and cut real close to the block right there at kind of an angle like this to cut a good sharp edge cause the timing cover gasket kit comes with corner pieces that to, to uh, RTV back here. So you wanna make sure this is flat and good and clean. You can inspect your cam bearings. These look good. They have normal wear, so that's good. And uh, we can get to cleaning. All right, here's a quick look. We got all the mating surfaces cleaned now. It's very important that you get this right. If you don't clean this properly, you could have a leak on your hands and that's not what you want. Then you gotta pull all this back apart and do it again. So make sure you take your time and clean it right. It's worth it, trust me. All right, so we're ready to install our cam. We got some engine assembly grease I'm gonna be using. You wanna coat the bearing in the first, you know, do like this section first, then you can put it in the engine and let this hold, the motor will hold this for you, then you can do the rest. So we're gonna take some on our glove, and just smear it around here really good. And this is to make sure that the cam breaks in properly, don't start up and, you know, spin a bearing or wipe a lobe or nothing like that. All right, now once you got a good coat on there, you can't use too much of this stuff. Better to use too much than not enough. So you want a good coat on the lobes and the bearing, or the bearing rides. And then what I'm gonna do for a little bit of extra is just take some of my engine oil and I'm gonna just squirt it over this and that grease will help hold it to the, to the lobes. Perhaps a bit overkill, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So. All 
Okay, now we're going to install our cam plate. You can't install this wrong. It only go one way. It even tells you, I mean, it'll go either way, but the, the correct way, see it says back and bottom. So back meaning toward like the back of the engine or the back of the car. So it go on the engine. Like if you look at the engine like this, it would go back bottom like that. So it'll look like this, actually more like that whenever you got it installed, if you're looking at it from the front. All right, now it's time to prep our lifters and put our lifters in the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that assembly grease and coat the outside of these, put them in the hole, put some on the bottom, put some around it, drop them in the hole, and then I'll go through my syringe and fill the tops up with oil. Put a good coat on the bottom like that. I'm gonna go through and do all 16. All right, I installed the timing chain. You want the keyway straight up and down on the crankshaft. And there's a dot on the camshaft. There's a dot down here too, but there's a dot on the camshaft. Point straight down. You want these two marks aligned perfectly straight up and down. All right, so now we're about to be ready to install the intake. The kit comes with cork gaskets, never use them, they'll always leak. I just use RTV, put a good bead on there, that's all you need. Do not put RTV on your uh, mating surfaces to the head, you could put some around the water jackets, but nowhere else. All right, when you put your intake gaskets on, look at them. See, this says head side, so this will go toward the head. The other side faces up, obviously. All right, now we're going to install the intake. Once you got a good bead of silicone here and your intake gaskets installed, I like to take the intake and get a couple of bolts in it. Take this dial pins to help you align it before you set it down all the way. You want to make sure you set it down all the way flat and even. You'll see the RTV squeeze out. That's good. You can always clean the penny extras that may squeeze out. Put all your bolts in and tighten them down. All right, usually the intake bolts are a half inch, but I installed ARP bolts that are 3 8 You want to go through in like a back and forth pattern, you know, start in the middle and work your way out. That way it tightens it down evenly to prevent warpage. If you have iron heads, your final torque is 22 to 24 foot-pounds. If you have aluminum heads, it's 18 to 22 uh, foot-pounds, I believe. Uh, I don't use a torque wrench. I just tighten them by hand because I know the feel, and I've never had one leak. So, But you do what you need to do. All right, what we're going to be doing now is installing the thermostat and housing. I forgot to put it on before I put the intake on. Usually you want to put it on before you put the intake on because it's easier. But uh, with these four 302s, because the thermostat sits inside here like this. And then you got to put it on here. And it's harder to get to that bottom bolt and everything with uh, the intake on. But that's all right. We'll get it anyway. So what I went with here is a... A chrome one, a chrome housing, and I decided to try something new. I got this from Holly's website. It's an O-ring style thermostat housing instead of your traditional gasket where you have to put the RTV in the gasket and RTV. The only thing we got to do now is make sure that the thermostat stays in the housing. So it's a good snug fit. I like this. I'm gonna take some RTV and put on this to stick in here to hold it. I'll let it dry for a minute. That way it don't fall out. And that'll make it easier to install. Also, I got this from O'Reilly's. It's the uh, it's a Murray brand. And I like how they got this bleeder hole in here. And this will let air bubbles go out. So what you want when you install this is you want this facing up. So when you install an intake like this, so it's sitting in there like that. And you want it that way so then when the water's coming through and you're filling your radiator up, the air can bleed out through here. So when you install this, it would go just like that. 
into the thermostat. So yeah, we're gonna get this set up and uh, put it in. All right, now we're gonna install this. I got a good cut of uh, RTV around here. I'm just gonna stick it in here. Remember, make sure that bleeder piece is up. Stick it in just like that. And we'll let it sit here and dry for a few minutes and then we'll install it on the intake. All right, so the quick update, here's how far I've got along now. I uh, got the carburetor mounted and everything. Still got to hook up my throttle linkage. I got to hook up the, the got to prime the motor, put the distributor in, hook the vacuum advance up, set the timing, and then of course the radiator and pulleys and belt and all that. And then uh, it'll be ready to fire. So all right, so we're about ready to, to prime the motor. What I'm using for oil, I just changed the oil in it, put new oil in it. I'm using this Valvoline Racing Oil. It's 20W50, so a little bit more on the heavier side, but it's fine. This motor's broken. It's not a new motor. It's broken. We're just breaking the cam in. But this has zinc in it already. See, it says high zinc right there. It's racing oil. It's meant for flat tappet cams. High performance formula for push rod and flat tappet cam engines, which is exactly what this is. Plus, I also bought a bottle of zinc to go along with it. Uh, I know that bottle said high zinc already, but I wanted to be extra safe. You can't have too much zinc to a point. Obviously, you don't want to fill the entire engine up with nothing but zinc. But, but yes, yeah, so I bought this too uh, as an extra assurance for it to make sure that I don't wipe a cam load, but there's no complications with this. So every, the operation should go completely smoothly. Anyway, when you get ready to prime this, this is my setup I got for it. This goes on the old pump drive. It'll go down to the distributor hole, and I use my drill. And make sure that when you're going to prime, you set it in the reverse position you want to turn the engine runs or the, the distributor runs in a counterclockwise position. So put your drill in reverse to prime it. And when you do this, you want to make sure you want to turn it until you'll feel resistance. It'll get real hard to turn. You want to do that for a few minutes. Just, uh, I do have new lifters and a new cam. So that's really all we got to worry about. But the push rod's the same, rocker arms, crankshaft bearings, camshaft bearings, all that's the same. The old pump's already got oil in it. But we just want to do this to pump oil through the whole engine so when it starts up, it's not starting up dry, so to speak. It's been a few days since I've started this car. You see how it started out pretty easy, and it didn't take real long. It bogged way down. And that is exactly what I'm talking about. You'll feel the resistance, and it'll get hard to turn. Uh, this, isn't a, this is a stock oil pump. So it's not a high performance, so it don't have as much resistance as, let's say, a high performance, like high volume oil pump, but it still has a good amount of resistance. All right, I'm going to show you how to install a distributor and set your timing before you ever even crank up the car. That way there's no complications. You don't have to sit here and try to pick the distributor up and turn it or turn the cap way over to get it to line or nothing like that in order for it to fire. What you want to do is you want to put your home on the balancer on zero, top dead center. You want to put it on top dead center on zero, and then we're going to put the distributor in on one. All right, so what I did to make it easier on me, you see I marked it right here. I put the distributor cap on here, seeing where number one spark plug wire was, marked where it is. That when I put this in, I know that I can line it up into the motor without having without it needing the cap. All right, now we're going to drop this in here, and you may have to work it a few times to get the teeth to mesh with the new cam, especially that cam being a new uh, gear and everything. And also, when you put this in, you want to turn your rotor button a little bit back because as you put it in, it will turn on its own to line up. So you have to kind of start at a sink. That actually went in easier than I expected. Yeah, we got it pretty much perfect on the first try. False alarm. The distributor's not down all the way. If this happens, sometimes this will happen. You need to turn the motor and it will fall in the rest of the way. So we're gonna turn the motor a little bit. Let me see, it's working. There we go. Now it's all the way down. But now the problem we got is that, oh no, never mind, we're good. Okay, good to go. But now we got to turn the motor back the other direction to get back on zero. Actually, I don't like that, so we're gonna start over and do it again. 
And this is how I want, I want this to be pointing more like this when it's all done. So we need to take this out, turn this over one tooth, drop it back in. And then it should sit right about here when it's actually right. Okay, now we got it where I want it. I pulled it out, I moved this over one tooth that way to the left. Now sitting down all the way, we're gonna put my distributor hold down bolt in so I can turn this without having to worry about this moving, which it don't really matter actually, because we're gonna move it anyway. Uh, also, as a side note, anytime you turn the motor opposite of the way it usually runs, and you, or uh, yeah, if you need to, if, in other words, if you need to take it back, when you bring it back this way, make, wherever you end at, make sure that no matter, if you had to turn the motor this way, make sure that whenever you end turning the motor, you always end going in the direction it usually runs. So you take the slack out of the timing chain for the direction it usually runs, because if you don't, and you, like if you turn it to the left and you keep it set to, like if you turn this motor to the left and you leave it there, the slack will be in the opposite side of the timing chain. Now this is a new timing chain, so it's good and tight, but if you have a more worn out one, it could potentially not, run as well it won't give you a, as true of a uh performance i guess you say because it's got more slack in it and it's, it's reading like retarded kind of so keep that in mind so we got my i got my distributor set on number one it's pointing straight to number one now i'm gonna set this motor to start up at 10 degrees for now and uh if i have to adjust the timer from there i can bump it up i might end up burning it at 12 but i'm gonna start with 10 and go from there so you want to find 10 on your harmonic balancer. We're going to move the pointer to 10 degrees. To do that, we need to back, we need to turn it the opposite way, but go past 10 and then bring it back up to 10 this way. Because like I said, take that slack out of the timing chain. And you want to bring it up. And now you can take your distributor and you want to move it to where the, the rotor button is pointing at the number one spark plug. Now, without a timing light, this motor is, especially with this new timing chain, is set at 10 degrees uh, of timing. Now, give or take, it could be a degree off, either way, you know, up or down. But it's so close that now when you hit the key on this car, it's going to fire right up just as if you just rolled up in here and shut it off. And then you can fine-tune it when it's running with the timing light. All right, now, if you look here, you can see what I'm talking about. See if you look and notice that distributors are always at an angle a little bit so you want to get straight on to your distributor and you can see it's pointing straight at the number one location so now we're good to go now we can start our distributor cap hook our spark plug wires up and we're good to go all right guys well that's a done deal what i ended up going with was a 265 deh cam which is actually a cam that I already had. Great cam. The 265 has a 211, 223 duration, and these are at 50,000 specs. The lift is lower, so it's under 500. It's like 473 and 486 or something like that. So it, it works real well. It's really close to the stock cam. I measured the, the stock cam lift and it's pretty close. The 265 is a cam that I actually had laying around already. It's the one I put in my motor in the truck, in my truck, the first time I built it. And then when I rebuilt the motor again because it broke a piston six months later, I changed the cam to give it something a little bit bigger. But I love the 265. It's got a 1500 to uh, 5600 RPM range, I believe. I know it's 1500, but I think it ends at 56. But great, great cam. It's exactly what I want. You can feel it really, like it, it takes off good in gear, normal, but you can really feel it pull too when it hits that 1500 RPM. So you can just really feel it dig in. It'll set you back in the seat now. It sounds really good. Uh, and it's still get the good gas mileage. And it runs great. I, I just I love this cam. And this is probably what I'm going to stick with. If I ever upgrade the motor in the future to a Windsor or a Cleveland, this is a Windsor cam. So I'll either put this cam in the in the Windsor if I decide to go that route or because I like it. Or I might order a crate engine. Uh, I might order a crate Windsor cam with a roller cam and all. But with these specs because I like this cam. But yeah, that's it, guys. If y'all like the video, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. If you got any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment box down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and help you in any way that I can if you have any questions. Also, as always, thank y'all for watching. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it. It helped me out. And as always, 
I'll see you in the next one. Y'all take care.